Hi, I'm Simon St. Lawrence, Senior Editor at O'Reilly Media and Co-Chair of the Open Source Conference. I'm here with Faisal Abin. He's going to be teaching a crash course in Node.js here and we're going to talk about Node and open source and how all these pieces fit together. So why don't we start with the crash course, you know, kind of what, what pieces do people really need to get into Node right off the bat? Not a lot, really. Uh, if, you're, if you've ever done web development before, really Node.js you already know. It's, it is just JavaScript, uh, and what's cool about it is that because it's JavaScript, you can easily pick it up and run with it. You don't need to learn something else, mm -hmm. and so all you need is you need to go to node.js.org, download Node.js, and then you're done. Right? There's no editor involved, there's no ID involved. Right. You, you just open up a notepad and you type in your script. In terminal, you run node script.js and you're, it's running. Right, so you're, you're running and you're in JavaScript, I'm, but I'm guessing you're using a different set of objects and different sets of, yeah. yes. And so there's no, there's no notion of the DOM. Uh, you have, it's just essentially Node.js is running on top of V8. Right. So you take your JavaScript and it compiles down to see whatever V8 does. So you can write a simple application like a calculator in Node.js to highly scalable apps like what LinkedIn has done with their mobile stuff. Right, like uh, I've heard LinkedIn's mobile infrastructure is built on Node.js, okay. so it's kind of cool. Yeah, it seems like, like I, I was at Fluent a couple a month ago, and uh, Bill Scott was talking about uh, bringing Node into PayPal, yeah. and like trying to drive web practices into the enterprise right. universe. Um, and it, it seems like for a lot of people, web development actually doesn't involves that much understanding of JavaScript. And yep. especially on the back end, this is a new thing to do. Yes. Um, what kind of responses are you getting from people? How is, how is that kind of conversation going? I'm it's interesting. A lot of people, I know a few people say, uh, no, it's not going to get anywhere. And you ask them why, it's like, oh, because it's JavaScript. And JavaScript, <laughs> is, JavaScript is broken, JavaScript is bad. Sure, you know, JavaScript has its bad parts and its good parts. There's that famous example where JavaScript definitive guide and then the, the good, good parts, parts, right? Yes. But uh, at the same time, Node.js really helps you write. If you're a developer who wants to build, especially these days, and everyone wants to build a startup, right? right? So if you're wanting to build the next great app, you can build your front end in JavaScript, HTML, you can make it nice and pretty. You don't have to learn a new language. You just transfer all those skills, right. minus the HTML and CSS, right back into JavaScript on the server right. side, right? You have to learn, definitely have to learn server side concepts, like what requests are and like what, how you're dealing with databases and stuff, because usually people on the front end never deal with that stuff, right? right? But no, but it is, there's one less barrier to learning that. You're, you're sticking with familiar syntax. You're right. not dealing with like Objective-C style syntax or some random stuff where right. you're like, whoa, I don't understand what's going on. Right, it seems like the event handling model that they came up with for the browser turns out to work nicely in the server yeah. as well. It's great, it, you know, Node.js is fundamentally built on this whole event loop, right? So you don't have to deal with multi-threads. As a, as a web developer coming into a server side, you know, lots of languages, I know I was a ColdFusion developer in the back mm. before Node.js, and right. we have to do a lot of threads and stuff. In, uh, in Node.js, you're not doing threading. V8 is handling that for you. You're just dealing with the asynchronous callbacks. So you don't have to learn about you know, concurrency patterns right away. You'll for sure right. need it later on, but it's a le one less barrier again. Right. So kind of moving past the, the crash course, the opening the node and typing and stuff and getting it going, sort of what do you, what do you suggest for your classic front-end web developer who wants to move into this, wants a little more control of their back end? Like, what does that path look like to well the first thing is I've, I've always said go to the mailing list and just browse it see what they're up to right right like, you don't have to ask questions you don't have to like respond to anything just see what people are asking because chances are the question that they're asking you that people are asking there are going to questions that you're thinking about right away right like how do i build an api someone's going to say oh you can use express and then you're going to click on express you're going to go to the github page and github has been like a driving force behind node.js right Sub, I mean, indirectly, because of their open source, everyone who publishes a node module is on GitHub. NPM is based off, NPM, when you go NPM install Express, it goes to GitHub and fetches it. Right. So you go to GitHub, there's, they have readme's there. You look at the readme and it's copy and paste the coding. The way I learned it is I literally copy and paste it. I don't open it up side by side and type it. I copy and paste it and I work backwards. I break it. I understand what's going Good. on. And so that's, that's what I recommend 
copy and paste the API example from Express, right, and see what happens. And if it doesn't work, look at, go, then go to Stack Overflow and ask a question there, right? So that's how I would recommend someone learning it. Okay. Well, you mentioned Express. Node itself is a pretty small piece yes. of code. Are there other modules that you start with early, or you just sort of stay in your own JavaScript as long as you can? You, you Node, no, yeah, Node is very small. Node, Node's main I, footprint, I mean, idea was keep the footprint really small mm -hmm. and let other people deal with it, right? Which is why Node.js was developed so quickly. It, they didn't wait like six years to make it. Express is a great module if you want to do anything with the web. Express comes with easy, except, I mean, you can still do it with Node, but right. Express adds a bunch of wrappers around it where you can go uh, app.get, and that instantly creates a get request API for your app. Right. And you can easily render H, uh, handlebars or Jade or templates so uh, you, your apps could be dynamic right away. Right. So Express is the biggest thing. If you're dealing with Node, chances are you're going to want to write it, write a database in MongoDB. Uh, Okay. So uh, the best uh, the best framework for that is Mongoose, okay. and you can instantly you can go npm install Mongoose, and Mongoose is an ORM built on top of uh, MongoDB. Right. So you're not it's it's schemaless. At the same time, you have to define a schema up front uh, to go. Okay, this is how my schema is going to be. Right. And then you can easily treat them as JavaScript objects. So there's no foreign syntax there again. So so once you get it set up, you sort of forget that you're using this outside exactly. tool and exactly and the world moves smoothly. Exactly. OK, great. Well, I look forward to your talk. And uh, you know, we hope to see you again soon. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you.